Hello gang. So here we are again in search of how to get this voice to work at its absolutely best level to get the most potential out of it that it'll do and last for 50 years. I'm 82. I've been singing since I was 19. So believe me, when you're my age, you will still want to sing. <laughs> if you have a singer's heart, you will always want to sing. You love to sing. And for some reason, we like to get up and make noises with our throats in front of other people. We don't really know why. But anyway, we're still trying. Now, what I want to talk about today, everybody is lifting the voice, lifting and going, oh, and doing all kinds of stuff to try to get the voice. And in Germany, they call it getting it in the head, or getting in the head voice. Uh, in Italy, you hear girare, turn the voice. Uh, they used to say passare, pass the voice. Uh, the French are still saying, you know, uh, the, the passe and, and passage. And, and, and in Italy, they say passaggio, but they, they talk about turning the voice more. So what's happened since for some reason, reason it, became, uh, uh, it became unimportant the way you breathe, and people will actually tell you, don't breathe. If you really don't breathe, they'll say, oh, no, you don't need to breathe. Of course, they never sung anywhere. But they know everything. Everybody's a genius who's never sung anywhere. Believe me, all those that have sung a lot, and I've sang 62 roles, you've got everything, everything but a genius. Believe me, when you've done that, you realize, holy cow, how little I know and how I wish I knew a little bit more sometimes. So what I want to do today is talk about how do we get the voice up in the head or whatever way you want to describe it. How do we get it up there without lifting anything, without doing it in the throat? You know, those rules in the old, in the old days about no action in the throat, uh, the invisible throat, the invisible jaw, the invisible head. It was such commonly known, do not work in the throat, you know, breathe and don't walk in the throat. That was the whole thing. Breathe and don't do anything. Now, let's say I'm completely relaxed. I'm going to drop my breath. I'm going to drop my, everything that's going to go and I'm going to go, oh, no, no. now I'm, all right, so now my voice is down here. See where the level of my speech level is now? See that? Uh, uh, I'm really, I'm talking at a very low tessatura, which is the general lie of the music in this case, and in my case, the voice in music. So the more I relax, the more my voice drops out of here. Now, people do things, instead of breathing, they do things up here to get the voice to work. So if I lift my soft palate, you see that? I mean, that's the way I sang as a bass when I was young, right? So I sang as that. I didn't do anything below in the body. I didn't do any breathing. And I just lifted the voice up like that. And I sang that way. See? How are you doing? It's so nice to see you. See? And of course, as a, as a, you know, when you're a college sophomore, you, know, you do that. Everybody's, oh, my God. And, you know, what, are you, what, a, what a bass voice. Well, you didn't have anybody else. <laughs> you know? So the only problem was every time I sang with any kind of instrumentation or, or orchestra or anything, nobody could hear me. You know? So uh, the voice doesn't carry that way. The Italians say ingolata, everything in the throat. La gola is the throat. So the ingolata is always throated, right? Now, if I lift my palate up, let's say I, do, I want to use this. Ma, 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 ma. Now, it doesn't sound like a bass anymore or a baritone or something. It sounds like some sort of nasal tenor. Why is that wrong? Guess what? Nasality doesn't, doesn't penetrate and doesn't carry. People that sing very, uh, very uh, nasally, always have trouble being heard, right? So if I breathe, and I go, push my stomach out and take a breath, I go, now I got a good breath, and when I sing now, I go, ah, my voice is going through my nose, so that doesn't carry. I've got to find the sound that will get over the orchestra, especially without a lot of effort and work to do it, see? I've got to find some way that I can get up and sing for hours and a whole lifetime. And sometimes you rehearse all day and sing that night, rehearse the next day and not sing that. And sometimes your voice, your voice is, you've got to find a way to sing without such incredible, constant effort. And uh, so what somebody discovered a long, long time ago, this had been lost, was the deeper I breathe, the more, the more my voice goes up. So if I'm down here and I'm going to be relaxed, I'm going to let everything go now. I didn't breathe. Now I'm empty. My breath is empty. Let's hear my voice is. Now to get myself to sing, I have to do something up here. It's either going to go in my nose or I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to do something to get it up there. Otherwise, I can't sing. If I sing a high note in that position, right, I'll do this. Oh, and I'll do that. La, 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 la. Now some people like that sound. Oh, it's covered. It's over. It turned. But the problem is it doesn't go anywhere of the orchestra. You've got a big fat sound. 
that if they hear it, they hear a sort of a thick sound. It's not a ringing, you know, pretty sound. Now, let's see what the alternative would be. Let's say I pull in my stomach, like Mr. Caruso advised in his book, and uh, Lily Lehman talks about it all the time. And uh, te even Tetrosini said the first drop of air goes in the lower rear quadrant of the lungs. So everybody in those days was very, very obsessive about breathing. Caruso mentions breathing 60 times in his little book of 32 pages. So why do they breathe? All right, if I pull my stomach in and take a deep breath and I go, and now I'm going to start talking. Oh, guess what? My, the general lie of my voice has changed. I'm now in a different testatura in my voice. Look where my voice went. Now it's sitting up here. I don't sound like a bass anymore. What happened? Oh, my gosh. Somebody, I have somebody doing that. I say, what is this Mickey Mouse voice you got me singing with? They get in total panic sometimes because this voice gets very high and very light, and they don't hear themselves very well because the voice is busy going out to the, over the orchestra into the auditorium instead of sitting back here where we can hear it. I've got a eustachian tube right there. See, if I do that, I can hear my voice real well. So if I take a deep breath, behind me, here comes my voice. It's starting to creep up. See that? I'm singing like that now. Hi, how are you? Not in my nose anymore. It's sitting way up here. All I did to get it up there was to breathe. I breathe a certain way. I breathe the way Giovanni Martinelli told me to breathe. And Richard Tucker said, breathe behind you, sing in front of you. But sing in front of me, wait, no, here, here, sing in front of you. So then I sang from Martinelli, he said, he said, qui respirare, here breathe, e qui postare, and here put the voice. So you get this kind of advice from those fabulous singers that sang and all had those incredibly long careers and healthy voices and powerful voices. So we want to find out if I sing, if I really do breathe, and my voice just naturally you know, so goes up there. Now, am I tenorino all of a sudden? What do I do? What kind of voice do I have then? See, what do I sing? So I go, ah, 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 that's my voice. Now, what do I sing? Now, that puts us in a whole different world of possibilities. If I take the breath, attach it to my diaphragm, there's several ways to do that. So I take this big breath, right? And I go, Ooh, ah, and I make a big attachment to my diaphragm. That's one of the, the uh, instigators that I, that I recommend to people. And uh, I've done, I made a tape called The Mystery of the Three Voices. <clears throat> if you do that, you go, Ooh, ah, 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 that's one voice. Or, Ooh, ah, 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 that's another voice. Ooh, ah, 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 so how many voices do I have and how do I use them? And guess what? They're all sitting up there somewhere. None of them are down here, folks. And you don't want to get so that you say absolutely. People are so chesty, so deep, so inactive in the, in the lower part that the, that the vocal cords come together and the entire vocal cord vibrates instead of just the edges. We just want the edges to vibrate, right? So breathe. Now my voice is back up there again. So now which voice will I sing with if I do that? See? Ah, is that ooh, ah, or is that ooh, ah, ah, how are you today? I'm fine, how are you today? I just made a tape the other day uh, talking about speech, speaking and singing. And, it, you know, let's face it, it works really well if you get the habit. The problem is we got to speak correctly, you know? If I, if I, if my phonation is weird, if I talk like that, I'm going to get a dark sound. If I talk like that, I'm going to get a real bright sound. So I've got to find something neutral and go, I learn to talk there. Now, the other problem that I have is if I'm really neutral and not using any, any muscles, you know, activity in my throat, how am I going to get my voice up there? Because I can't lift the soft palate and do all those things and press the tongue and lift the tongue and all that activity people do in their mouths and throats. So what am I going to do? How am I going to get my voice up there? And the secret is to breathe. So I breathe. And then I talk. Hello, you today. Guess where my voice is? It's sitting right there. And I can sit here and talk all day long. And I can talk forever and never get tired. And you can sing all day and talk all day and sing all night and sing every night and sing all day. Like some uh, Helga Ronsfang is saying three times a day. Rehearsed in the morning, sang, made recordings in the afternoon and sang every night. Seven days a week for 55 years. When I asked him, how is that possible? What did you do? He said, 
I said, I said, how is that possible? He said, yoga. I said, what? He did yoga three hours a day. I've talked about this on the other tapes that I've made. If I breathe and I'm doing, guess what? Where's my voice going? Let's say I do breath of fire. Where's my speaking voice? Hello, everybody. How are you today? See? All of a sudden, my voice is up there. How, how did my voice get up there without me lifting to get up there? So what we're trying to do is, is follow the old-timey rules of no action to throat, right? The invisible jaw, the invisible tongue, and the invisible throat, and no change of emission. If I change emission, I'm getting in trouble, see? If I put too much air on my throat, remember nothing passes through here but air, and if that air is not converted to sound, then we're going to get in trouble in the vocal cords. You can be sure of that, you know? So that's why this exercise is so important. So you should go through the whole alphabet. See? That is the question. Why would I let air slip through my throat that's not converted to sound? On the other hand, if I cannot let air slip through my throat and convert it all to sound, it never strains my voice. There's nothing coming through here under pressure that is not converted to sound. And when you do this, you realize, wait a minute. Some singers are yelling. They're singing with such an incredible amount of pressure on the breath that if the note slips, they get damaged and people get bleeding, uh, they get bleeding uh, uh, capillaries and even some of them big veins and they burst them and they start bleeding in the throat because the pressure is so... I had one friend who was a trumpet player and he blew so hard on the trumpet trying to do what he separated uh, the cartilage and his, and his larynx of all things. And... You know, we have to be careful about all this pressure. You know, the, the diaphragm is the biggest, body, the biggest muscle in your body, and you can really, really put a lot of pressure. You add the, the squeezing of the ribs to that, and you can put a lot of pressure on there, and it will, not, it will not stand it. Or it'll stand it for a while, but if one note slips, one note loses, and the breath comes suddenly gashing up under pressure, you know, then you have a disaster. Then you have a catastrophic nerve damage that cannot be repaired. So we want to find... No air, none, and I'm doing that. Ah, see, ah, sweet mystery of life, at last I found you. Why would I let air come slipping through my throat? All right, now, let's go back to the amazing secret that somebody knew a long time ago. And somebody taught it to me and impressed it. You know, I was so impressed with Martinelli and Richard Tucker and, and Mario Delmonico. I mean, these tenors were fabulous. UC Burling was so incredibly, such a great singer. And Fritz Wunderlich was fabulous. And then comes along uh, Pavarotti, right? And you realize how, how um, they didn't do all this funny stuff. When, when, uh, when you hear a tape of Pavarotti, it sounds like he's covering a high note. What he's doing is not doing anything. No, if I go, if I go uh, let's say, let me find a picture. And my voice is turning over, and in America we call it covering, which is not a very good word. Uh, passes is a better word. That was the old European word. The resonance passes. So the modification, when I get to the upper note, should be a modification of the resonance, not a modification of the vowel or the throat. See? My throat is neutral. My throat doesn't exist. It's invisible, like this. Now, I'm going to take a huge breath behind me, and there goes my voice. It's climbing up on me. Hear that? There it goes. And then I go, see? How are you today? You can understand every word I'm saying. And all I did was breathe to get my voice up there. So in Germany they call it Kopfstimme, head voice, and in Italy they call it, still today, as far as I know, they call it squillo, which means ring. A bell rings, la camarella squilla, when you hit the bell. So it's a ringing sound and not this sort of dark, uh, throaty, ingolata sound. Uh, we want to get so that we breathe in a way 
and we practice breathing so much. I mean, Ross Wenger did his yoga three hours a day. Robert Merrill did it two hours a day. Uh, you think of these people. Pavarotti played tennis all the time. You bend over and you breathe. Ezio Pinza rode the, the bicycles in the, in the mountain bicycle races in Italy, and his, his bottom was up in the air like that. He's breathing his lower back the whole time. The whole idea is I breathe, 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 and go... And now what kind of voice do I have? Because now I can also establish the category of my voice, type, and what repertoire I'm going to sing. What can I really sing if I breathe and my voice goes up like that? I mean, I can fool people down here. Let's face it. I can sing all kinds of things that sound like my voice is bigger than it really is. See, I sing, uh, uh, now, I can fool people, and I can get hired as a heavier tenor, and I've been hired <laughs> as a heavier tenor, and I have cheated, and I've done everything under the sun trying to get through some of that music, uh, and be heard in that music, and... Uh, the truth is you have one voice that happens if you breathe a certain way and you have this voice without having to do anything in your throat at all. And you do not have to increase, constantly increase the pressure of the breath. If this is zero, and this is 100%, <laughs> how much should I use? Think about it. If I go, is that enough? Let's take a breath. Now I'm going to sing uh, Otello again. My voice is already up, see? Now, that not be, might not be an Otello voice. Uh-oh. <laughs> not fooling anybody. But I'm also not fooling myself. And I can survive with that one. Where the other one, you know, my days are numbered. When I start using that big, heavy blow, and I'm going, and using all kinds of, of uh, heavy emission, and, and my throat is spread apart. What if I yawn? Now, I'm going to sing like that. What am I going to sing that with? My voice is getting darker. Darker, but where's it going to go? Is there any squillo? Is there any ring that's going to make my voice carry? How about more nose? Ma, 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 ma. Get some sound in there. So it's hot. Oh, you can forget that. Those don't carry at all. They sound terrible. So the truth is, I'm sort of trapped. I'm stuck with the voice I have, for which I was always very grateful to have one, and I love to sing, but I like, I'm 82 and I still like to sing, and when you're 82, you're gonna wanna to sing too, and so you don't put your voice at risk by making a huge hole and then trying to fill it up with a lot of air. What you do is you use the hole or the throat that you have that is your normal throat. If you're asleep at night and you're snoring, you're going, how big is your throat? Ha 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 ha. Now, let's go back to our dramatic opening of Otello, and I go a snore method, and I go. Now, there are places that will hire me because everybody's desperate, desperate for those big heavy tenors. They used to come back, I'd sing, I don't know. I was like, boy, I am, especially Carmen or something like that. And, and somebody would come back and say, you know, we're doing, we're doing uh, Young Siegfried and Tristan next year. Would you sing them for us? I said, what? what? I said, have you ever heard of Helden Tenor? I studied with Lars Melchior for nearly six months. I know what a Helden Tenor sounds like. Not to mention Rosvang a year and a half and Richard Tucker for five months. And, and uh, you know, you get with these big voices and you realize, holy cow. Is this what, is this what they, well, so when they hear the voice, you know, projecting and coming over in the back of the hall and sounding big and ringy, they think, oh my gosh, it's a dramatic tenor. It's not. It's just a voice that carries. And Tito Skipa sang in the biggest, he and John McCormick sang in the biggest theaters in the world. In fact, I think Skipa sang in every big theater in the world except, uh, except London, except Covent Garden. And I think, I think McCormick sang in all of them. And, uh. Uh, McCormick still holds the record for the most concerts in New York City in one year, 19, and they're all at the Hippodrome, 6,400 6, seats, right? That was my record, 6,400 seats in one theater I was in, but I did a lot of 5,000 size theater. And believe me, you walk out there and this, this enormous space, some of them only have one balcony, which means all of those people are spread out in all that open space, right? Uh, 
uh, the uh, I think it was the let's see the Liceo in Barcelona had five balconies, so everything was so much closer. But some of them only have one balcony. And they're way there. I remember Eline Hall in Toronto, where I sang Dallas Fairgrounds, that huge monster theater. Those places were five and a half thousand seats, and they were the space was enormous. Well, what are you supposed to do? Really, you're just going to get blow air. All if you get through that performance and have a success, then you're stuck. You won't get offered anything else, maybe ever. <laughs> And the only thing you'll get offered will be dramatic tenor parts. You see what I mean? So the idea is not be too good and don't be too dark. Everybody thinks, well, it's good to be big and dark. No, it's not. It's better to be a beautiful lyric singer. If I can breathe and go, how about that one? Isn't that nice? Why not that one? Why isn't that enough for me to be satisfied and to sing and, and, and be a singer? Why do I want to get heavier? But the truth is, uh, there are other, more than what I want, there are other considerations. Uh, if I, I want to survive. I want to sing a long, long time. So, you should, you should be taught by someone who says, you know what, if you use your throat and you blow out a lot of air, you won't survive. You will pay the price down the way. And look what's happening in the world today of all our magnificent young talent, young singers. I mean, everybody's in trouble. Even Adele is in trouble. And all she's doing is overblowing. If you give her that exercise, you give these guys this exercise where you have to, they used to do it with a candle flame. See? And then somebody even a tissue paper. See that? Oh, so if I sing, I mean, the opening of uh, Val, uh, in, in Valkyrie, where uh, Zygmunt talks about his father promised him a sword, there's three voices in the first page and a half of two voices, uh, or, or, or two pages. He's got uh, uh, this, he goes, I went, Hoo-ah! first voice, right? Hoo-ah! Second voice, and Hoo-ah! see that? Now I'm going to take a big breath, and I'm going to sing with all three. Ein Schwert, ein Schwert, verhieß mir der Vater, ich fände es in höchster Not. Now comes second voice. Waffelos fiel ich in feines Haus, seine Rache fand raste ich hier. And now comes the third voice, big breath. Ein Weib sah ich, wann ich und hier entzückend bangen, zählt mein Herz. Now, all three of those have to be available. You have to be able to use them. They all have to carry over some really big orchestration, particularly if you do Wagner. Some of the orchestras are really big. So the idea is that you should have control of your voice by by raising it up where it's functional and resonant and carrying and projecting only by having to breathe. And you don't have anything else. See, that's hard to believe. People are hard to believe. It's, oh, my, hi, hi. well, I can demonstrate it. That's all I can do, you know? It doesn't matter. Some people think, oh, no, you have to, oh, you have to modify your throat. Well, that's, of course, you know, people that have done that go all to pieces and people do that. I mean, John Vickers, one of the biggest voices in the world, uh, when he made his Met debut in New York and Pagliacci, the, 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 the critics, uh, the New York critics, complained that he was inaudible, inaudible on the famous uh, big high notes. Now they say that Jonas Yon, Kaufmann is, in, is inaudible and uh, I've got students in, at Covent Garden in London and they're, they're, they say, you know, this guy's a, you know, such a super talent, but he's, uh, he's, he's getting singing, he's got singing too much, that's what he knows, his voice is coming down. If I raise this up, I can take this voice like that and then raise it up, see? And I can sing, So I've got my, uh, in Germany they call it chest voice, and they bring this chestiness sound up and try to get it high enough that it feels like it's sitting in the mask and you realize it doesn't carry. If it does carry, uh, then it sounds like a big sort of wookie. <laughs> the wookie note, sort of very, very muffled and sort of dark sounding. And uh, what you want to do is go and do nothing. Do nothing in your throat, right? Take a big breath and go so if I'm testing and I'm singing Otello, I do this. Now, if, if, that, if I'm an Otello, that's all I need. Take a big breath and go. 
Santa Memoria. The question is, is that an Otello voice? If it's not, I shouldn't be trying to sing that music. And especially some of the big vongas, forget those. Man, you're in the middle voice all night, 130-piece orchestra playing. I did Meister Singer and, and, and Flying Dutchman and Parsifal. I did the so-called higher, lighter, easier Wagner parts. Well, believe me, you, ain't, you, <laughs> you, you, you take a look at Siegfried. You won't believe what's happening in the orchestra when Siegfried, and he sings a lot in the middle. A lot in the middle. And when those guys all start singing and they all get uh, too much pressure going, if you have the right kind of voice, you stand up and go, Brrr. and if you have the right kind of voice, you can sing anything. Now, what do I have the right kind of voice for? So therefore, we must identify Fach, which is the German word for category. In other words, what, what repertoire should I be singing if I go, ah, 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 and that's my voice? Should I be singing Wagner at all? Maybe even the so-called... Lighter ones? I don't know. What do you think? See? You don't know. Everybody's an expert today. Now, if I don't breathe, let's say I don't breathe. I go, all right, I'm saying, now you understand the voice is down here now. So there's nothing, there's no action. The third law of motion in physics says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If I want my voice to go up, I have to breathe down. So if I don't do anything with my breathing, my voice just drops down and sits down here. And now, what kind of voice do I have and what am I going to sing? See? Let's say I want to sing, I don't know, I want to sing Parmi Videle Lagrime. Parmi Videle Lagrime, scorrendi la conciglio quando. Now, is that the way I should be singing? And will that carry over the orchestra? And if you can hear it, does it sound like the Duke of Rigoletto? Or does it sound like you're some kind of phony, artificial, uh, straining your guts out to try to sound uh, heavier than your voice really is? So if I take a deep, boy, a deep breath, I go, and I do nothing up here like this, and I go, now, which, which voice is mine, and should I, which way should I sing that music? I sing that music because I have a certain kind of voice and I identify my voice by taking deep breaths and getting my voice to go up without having to lift my voice or darken my voice or modify or lift my soft palate, right? Uh, even the priest sneeze, although the action is correct and it's up and forward and closes the nose, it still is a, it still is a mechanical process instead of letting it happen naturally as a result of breathing. Remember, if I breathe down, the opposite and equal reaction is that something goes up. If I breathe down and back, something goes up and forward. So I'm going to breathe. And there it is, just sitting right up there like that. See? Now what should I do? Think about it. See? If I go, No, I'm not a lady, my simile Do I need to lift it any higher than that? Or do I need to lift anything at all? up to get it higher than that, or did the breathing lift it for me and put it up there in my so-called kufshime, head voice. If I breathe that way, the voice goes up there by itself. Breathe? You have all kinds of things, and the guys that really do extreme yoga and do all that breath of fire and all this breathing and all this stuff, their voices sit so high. You should have heard Ros Rosfanger. And Lars Melchior told me that Rosfanger had the greatest voice he ever heard in his life. And let's face it, Melchior was a historical singer himself, sang with Flaugstad, laid her some, with, with some great singers. But he, man, he thought Rosfanger was something. Rosfanger did yoga three hours a day for 55 years. And guess where the voice sits when you do that? All of that incredible breathing and all those postures. So anyway, I wanted to talk about this today and uh, have everybody think about don't lift all the time and do all this kind of stuff so you sound like a Wookiee, right? Just take a breath and go. The other advantage is I can sing looking up if I want to. I got a five balcony theater or three balconies. I can sing to the to people up there that yell bravo. I don't have to sing but look, look like this all the time. So I go, ah, oh, there's my voice. So the voice with throat's free and the neck's free and I can look up and I can sing up I can sing a serenade to the upstairs to the young ladies 
listening to me sing to her from if I'm serenading down below. So uh, I hope this will make people uh, think about how do I get my voice up there? You get it up there by getting down there. You get that breath way down low in your back and keep doing it and practice, practice, practice. <clears throat> and the more you breathe, the more the voice keeps creeping up into higher until finally you end up like some of these people did after a 50-year career with the voice just like tremendous, big, heavy, dramatic voices they became. Okay? All right.